This video introduces lag compensators. So viewers will remember, we're looking at an overall scheme of videos which ask questions like what is frequency response, how do I compute this, and how do I represent this efficiently. We've now done those three in the early videos. Next, we want to look at how we might use Bode diagrams for feedback loop analysis and design. And the first part of that is to ask ourselves how different compensators affect the Bode diagrams. And so here, we're going to look at lag compensators and ask how that affects the Bode diagram. First then, a definition. What is a lag compensator? Well, it takes the form given here. You'll see k, s plus beta a, divided by s plus a, where in particular we note that beta is bigger than 1 and usually considered to be less than 10. Now we're going to sketch this to give you an insight about what this is, but we'll do it using a very particular example. So we'll use this example here, 2 times s plus 4 over s plus 2, and you'll see for this case, k is 2, a is 2, and beta is 2. First then, if we're going to sketch the Bode diagram, we want to ask ourselves what the key asymptotic values are. So if omega is less than 2, so we're talking about low frequencies, you'll see that the gain is 4, or 12 decibels, and the phase asymptote would be 0. If 2 is less than omega is less than 4, then you'll see that we get a gain asymptote slope of minus 20 decibels per decade, and the phase asymptote minus 90. And finally, if omega is bigger than 4, the gain is 2, or 6 decibels, and the phase asymptote is at 0. Now, if you want some simple corrections, which we'll do for the phase plot, we're going to do those at the two corner frequencies, omega equals 2 and omega equals 4. So you'll see first, we've written down what the exact phase is. There it is, 10 to the minus 1, omega over 4, minus 10 to the minus 1, omega over 2. And you'll notice at both corner frequencies, you get minus 18 for this case. So here's our sketch then. So first, let's mark the two corner frequencies. The corner frequencies were at 2 and 4. So that's these two lines here. OK, and we said at low frequencies, you were at minus 12 decibels. Then you had 20 decibels per decade slope. Now, what I can tell you, um, because I've done this before, is 20 decibels per decade slope will take you down to there, which intersects with the 6 decibels that we had at high frequency. So there's the asymptotes for this example. Now, if you were to do the exact plot, I'm not going to be overly careful. Uh, we shouldn't need to be then it's going to go through probably this midpoint here. So you're going to get something along those lines for the game plot. What about the phase plot? You'll see we had an asymptote of zero at low frequencies and an asymptote of zero at high frequencies. And clearly it dips down, but I haven't taken the axis all the way to minus 90 because I know it doesn't get there. And what we said was at the corner frequencies, we had minus 18. And therefore, again, not being overly careful because it's not critical at this point, you will see you get a phase plot, something like this. So there's our bowed sketches for 2 times s plus 4 over s plus 2. Now, we want to look at those and ask what properties did we see for this bowed diagram? Well, the first thing we noticed was that the steady state gain was larger than the high frequency gain, in fact, by a factor of beta, and we'll get to that in a minute. So in other words, the low frequency had a gain of k beta, and the high frequency had a gain of k. So clearly, the low frequency is beta larger, or magnitude of beta larger, than the high frequency. In terms of the phase, we saw it was 0 at high and low frequency, and we saw it was negative around the corner frequencies, and it was largest between the corner frequencies. So let's show another plot, just so you can reinforce that. This is a different lag compensator, but you'll see it's got the same characteristic shape. You'll see we've got high gain at low frequency, and low gain 
at high frequency. So you have this classic drop off where you start high and then around the corner frequencies you drop down and then you become low. So that's classic for a lag compensator. What about the phase? You notice zero degrees at low frequency, zero degrees at high frequency and then in between around the corner frequency you get this negative phase and here you'll see the corner frequencies were 1 and 5 and so the key thing is the maximum phase or neg the maximum phase negative bit occurs around the corner frequencies and you'll see this also corresponds to where you get this minus 20 decibels per decade in the game plot so let's summarize the sorts of things we might be interested in how does the phase characteristic depend on the zero pole ratio which was beta how does the gain characteristic depend upon this ratio beta and ultimately we're going to ask ourselves how do I choose the pole zero positions of this lag compensator now that's for a later set of videos but we'll just note here for completeness normally you choose it to be well below the gain crossover frequency so when you know what the gain crossover frequency is you can interpret this statement so let's summarize these properties in detail the gain is by inspection low frequency gain is k beta high frequency gain is beta and therefore the ratio of low to high frequency gains is beta now here's something you'll need to be aware of in the long term a typical lag design focuses on the choice of beta not k so the ratio of low to high frequency gains is the most important thing in the lag compensator so if I do a, a simple lag sketch you'll see the game plot had this sort of shape and here this ratio beta is the thing that we're most interested in when we're doing a lag design now the value of K is actually going to be determined by other things which are not dependent on the lag design but that will be obvious when you look at videos on lag compensation the phase characteristic then if we calculate the phase here it is it's 10 to the minus 1 of omega over beta a minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega over a what do you notice given that beta is greater than 1 by definition for a lag well clearly this argument is always less than 0 because 10 to the minus 1 of omega over a must be bigger than 10 to the minus 1 of omega over beta a now the other thing you will notice is that you'll get a symmetry argument that is the phase at omega equals a is the same as the phase at beta a and those are the two corner frequencies so in other words you get the same phase at the two corner frequencies so you get a sort of symmetry and here's the proof if you want it there's the phase at the first corner frequency there's the phase at the second corner frequency and if you pause the video and copy those down it'll be very easy to prove that both of those will give you this 10 to the minus 1 of 1 over beta minus 45 so the phase plot is symmetric and you have the same phase at the corner frequencies now where do you get the largest phase dip well you can again prove that this occurs at the geometric mean of the corner frequencies there's the geometric mean a root beta now I'm not going to prove it the proof comes from simple calculus you take the phase argument here and you simply you do your differentiation and find out where the gradient is zero and you'll find it corresponds to this if you substitute that frequency in which is what I've done here you get 10 to the minus 1 of a root beta over beta a minus 10 to the minus 1 of a root beta over a and you'll see that gives you this 10 to the minus 1 1 over root beta minus 10 to the minus 1 root beta now if you use your rules which allow you to add 10 inverses together which is what I've done here then you find it reduces to this formula 10 to the minus 1 1 over root beta minus root beta divided by 2 and what you notice it depends on beta only a doesn't come into it so it only depends on the pole zero ratio this beta now you can 
calculate this phase peak for various different values of beta. So you see at beta equals 2, you get minus 19, beta equals 3, minus 30, and so on up to beta equals 10, you get minus 55. I'm not going to recommend you memorize these values, but it's worth having a table like this to hand because it gives you an idea of how this maximum phase changes with beta. So there's the summary. Better to have this table to hand so you can look up the numbers rather than calculating it every time. So some examples. Sketch the Bode diagram for the following lag compensator. So here it is, 0.2 times s plus 0.5 over s plus 0.1. You'll see that beta is 5, that's the ratio of the 0 to the pole. k is 0.2 and a is 0.1. So the low frequency gain is going to be 0.2 times 5, which is 1. The high frequency gain is just going to be 0.2. What about the key phase characteristics? Now, given this beta equals 5, I can use the phase formula to show that the phase peak is at 42 degrees, and I think the values are here. You'll see the geometric mean of the corner frequencies is the square root of 0.5 times 0.1, which is 0.22. And there's the formula we said that gives us the phase peak. So these are the key values I need to do a sketch. And here's the sketch, so you can see. You'll notice we said at low frequencies, the gain was one, or zero decibels. And then we get to the first corner frequency, of 0.1. We have the second corner frequency of 0.5. We have 20 decibels per decade in between the two. And then the steady state gain minus 14 decibels. And you'll notice our nice smooth curve going between the two gives us the gain characteristic. What about the phase? You'll see we had zero at low frequency. I'm just doing the asymptotes here down to minus 90 between the two corner frequencies back to zero. But critically, we said at the geometric mean, which was 0.22, and you'll see that's about here, we said we had minus 42 degrees. So that's that point. You could also use the formula to get those two points if you wanted them. And so you can see that the phase characteristic is going to do something like this. So some conclusions. The video has presented a lag compensator and the associated Bode diagrams. We've demonstrated that the lag compensator has a large gain at low frequency compared to the high frequency, and that it has negative phase in the region of the corner frequencies. Students should note that the gain characteristic is the one that is often used in design, and this will be discussed in later videos.